Since 2009, the Nigerian federal government has annually enacted finance acts into law to support the annual budget for the respective fiscal years, drive the macroeconomic policy reforms of the federal government and bring the tax laws into sync with modern realities among other objectives. These are some of the top changes now taxation of gains on the disposal of digital assets including cryptocurrencies at the rate of 10%. Deductions of capital losses on assets for capital gains uh, tax purposes may be carried forward for a maximum of five years. Rollover relief on sales of shares is subject to reinvestment of the proceeds within the same year of assessment. Well, let's talk more about this and let's do an in-depth analysis on this Finance Act. And I have no other person in the house. Now, the managing consultant, yes, let me correct that, Mr. Albert Folorunshaw, our Pedable Professional Services. Thank you so much. It's good to have you in the studio. Good afternoon, Tulu. Thank you for having me. Uh, yes, like I said in my introduction, we've had Finance Act since 2019, and it's become an annual event since then. But let's talk about what this really means and what it stands to achieve. Of course, the Finance Act is to give uh, support to the fiscal uh, policy of the government, uh, particularly on how to finance annual budget uh, all over the world. Countries, you know, provide, I mean, make adjustment to the tax provision to, to be in reality with, with whatever is happening in the economy. And so that is why the um, having the Finance Act, you know, to update our laws, uh, some of those laws that are so difficult to, to have a wholesale, you know, amendment if you want to pass such through the National Assembly. We know what it takes to, to do that. And so the Finance Act has helped in a very big way to bring our tax provisions you know, into reality. And we can see the progression from 2019. Interesting. He came to public knowledge this week that the immediate past president signed the 2023 finance law into act on the 28th. That's a day before the, fin the handover. Mm -hmm. uh, can you give an highlight of this new Finance Act and how do you think it will help stimulate the economy, particularly at this time where government needs revenue. Okay, unlike what we had had in the uh, previous years, the Finance Act here, you know, even though it's been ready since January, which I'm familiar with, but I know that there are a couple of issues that um, um, limited, I mean, restricted the signing into law early. But of course, I mean, we still have it, and we hope the tradition will continue under the new regime of uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Um, the first provision under the Capital Gains Tax Act, which you already mentioned, is the fact that uh, uh, digital assets, particularly cryptocurrency, ETA, and so on, are now liable to capital gains tax where you dispose your investment in them. Uh, of course, if you trade in them, you will still be liable to the uh, company income tax if you are a company and personal income tax if you are an individual. And like you mentioned uh, before now, when you make loss on disposal of an asset, such loss was declared lost. But now the provision says that when you make a loss, uh, the loss can be set off against gain you make from the disposal of the same asset in future years. And such losses can be carried forward for as many as uh, five years. Okay. Again, uh, recently the uh, taxation of uh, shares was um, uh, brought back such that when you dispose of shares that is um, 100 million and above, you will be liable to CGT as long as you don't reinvest. Okay, so the question is, that investment, how, does he, uh, how, how do you apply the provision? There is a provision for rollover relief in the Capital Gains Tax Act. So this amendment is just to bring uh, disposal of shares under the principle of uh, uh, rollover relief, where when you dispose of an asset okay. and you use the proceed to acquire another asset of the same class as the old asset, the gain on the disposal of the old asset is carried forward mm -hmm. until the new asset is eventually disposed. Okay, so it's a very technical yes, area, it but is. it's very significant because it left a loophole such that it is possible for uh, a very smart uh, investor to make disposal and escape the law as it was, but for this uh, new amendment. And we'll see that in practice. Again, if you go to the Communist Income Tax Act, Section 14 specifically, you know, which focuses on the uh, non-resident entities that are into uh, air and ship transport business, I think the government is trying to focus on those non-resident companies. They want them to file their return, okay? And of course, for them to continue to renew their licenses, they want to be sure that uh, they have filed their return, and so they're going to be requesting for their tax clearance certificate. In fact, they went to the extent of asking for the 
invoices they have issued in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, and another provision that was amended was the old or uh, the long existing uh, what we call investment allowance when you acquire plant and machinery effective from you know, 1990 and so on, uh, you are eligible to claim 10% investment allowance on those assets as an extra allowance on your normal, what we call initial and annual allowance. But that, you know, uh, government is trying to cut back on some of this uh, capital expenditure. And that is why when you talk about Nigerian uh, tax to GDP ratio, yeah. okay, being very low, okay, one of the reasons was uh, uh, because, uh, or is because of some of the relief and um, incentive that people are enjoying here and there. So government is gradually trying to cut back on uh, some of those incentives. And so 10% um, 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 investment allowance on plant and machinery now will no longer be available. However, if you already have a claim, I mean, an acquisition before now on which you have, you have um, investment allowance to enjoy, you can still enjoy it going to the future. The same thing also apply to what we call the rural investment allowance where you set up industry in a rural area and you had to incur expenditure on road and some other amenities. You know, there was this provision, but that was never really uh, popular. Another incentive that has been cut down on is um, the incentive that is given to hotels when they, um, when they generate funds from um, uh, uh, tourists in, in hard currency. Okay, such funds were supposed to be kept in in a pool where they will have opportunity of expanding their hotel activity, okay, within five years. That has also been, um, uh, has, has been taken by the government, which means that exemption is no longer available. Uh, whether you, the, the occupant is um, uh, a non-resident person or a local person, um, the income is fully liable to tax, okay? Then we have, um, Companies engage in upstream and mid midstream gas operations. That's in the oil and gas industry. In the oil and gas industry, okay. There is controversy as to whether their capital allowance is to be restricted to two thirds of their civil profit or not. This provision has uh, arrested that, and it says that uh, such companies that are into upstream and downstream uh, mid I mean upstream and mid midstream gas uh, operation are also eligible for full capital allowance claim that is, without any uh, restriction on the capital allowance they can uh, enjoy. A new one that also came into this provision uh, is, the, is the fact that uh, all services, you know, uh, enjoyed by Nigerians are now to be uh, liable to uh, duty of excise. Wow. Okay, and that was done recently before the, the former president left, uh, where they asked uh, telecom companies to impose uh, excise duties. Uh, of course, so it is the responsibility of the president to determine at what rate and as to what time such provision is to be uh, implemented. Mm. Uh, I know that there was a direction to telecoms, but the minister of telecommunication yeah. also stated that uh, that should be held, held in abeyance, I, I'm, and I'm sure that that has not been implemented yet. A new provision was also introduced such that it would be 5%, I mean, 0.5% XI on goods imported from outside Africa, mm. okay, that was a peculiar provision that is expected to generate funds to meet all the obligations that Nigeria has to African Development Bank, all those multilateral enterprises, the subscription and other obligations. So that is specific to that, but uh, uh, that is a new provision on that. Then if you go to the Personal Income Tax Act, the only provision that, you know, that came in is the fact that um, Deduction that is now allowed uh, for, uh, for premium you paid on contract for deferred annuity. Recently it was uh, cut back, but it has now been reintroduced. But the only proviso is the fact that when you make a premium contribution to a deferred annuity, you must not withdraw. You know, Nigerians used to use it as a scheme to reduce their, their tax. You claim a relief for it and then go back and withdraw your contribution. So in order to help the insurance companies, uh, that is what I can say for this provision, to help the industry because they are supposed to be you know, far ahead of where they are now. So allow people to pay premium for deferred annuity and then use it as a relief in calculating their personal income tax. Just like what we have for pension contribution, they are not to withdraw such a, a contribution to, to the scheme. 
Then under the PPTA, I mean, Petroleum Profit Tax oh, Act, yeah. a few provisions also came in, particularly to align uh, the Petroleum Profit Tax Act with what uh, most of the provision in the Petroleum Industry Act, particularly when it comes to the penalty regime, you know, most of the uh, penalty provisions in, um, in uh, the PPTA are already outdated. So uh, these amendments were just meant to update and align those provisions since several of the oil companies uh, operating in the upstream are likely to still be under the Petroleum Profit Tax Act regime for, for longer periods. So uh, that, was, uh, that is the main thing that came into the Petroleum Profit Tax Act. Then we have the Stamp Duties Act, which is the recent one that has been reinvigorated. Yeah. And of course, FRS is pursuing uh, with all their might. And, uh, but the only new thing that came now is the fact that uh, the revenue is to be distributed based on derivation, and the sharing is now to be 15% to federal government, 50% uh, to the state, wow. and 35% to the local government. Uh, where this is coming from, I cannot uh, say, but of course, um, it is expected that since the federal government is the one collecting for those that are applicable to companies, okay, uh, this sum will be distributed among the three tier of government as specified. Another significant provision that was amended is, um, is the uh, value added tax, okay, and the uh, anti avoidance provision was now, has now been introduced into the value added tax, okay, particularly when it comes to uh, related party transactions. Uh, so for, uh, the tax authority can now, you know, um, disregard any transaction or disposition where it has, which has not been carried out at arm's length. The federal government has also appointed a couple of companies uh, for collection of VAT uh, on their behalf, and particularly the banks were mentioned recently. And so for such that are now to collect VAT on behalf of the federal government, yeah. um, the, now, the provision is such that they should file returns within 14 days of the end of the month, which means apart from filing returns on your own income that is liable to VAT, which, is, which should be done within 21 days, if you are one of those companies that have been appointed as agent of federal government to withhold VAT on payments you are making, uh, you are supposed to file another return within 14 days. The, 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 what FRS want to achieve there is such that when your input VAT, because somebody paying you is, um, whatever somebody paying you uh, is the one that is, is input VAT to the person. Okay. okay, so it is expected that by the time that return is filed on the 14th, uh, this, the, the VAT will be credited to your account in what the FRA use at the tax promax, such that by the time you are filing your own return by the 21st, you will, have, you will be able to claim you know, your input VAT you know, that will have been credited to you. Uh, we want to see how that will work. We hope that if that works very well, we should also move on to engage the FRS such that they should be able to credit everyone with their withholding tax because that has been very controversial. And so if they can treat the uh, withholding VAT correctly and crediting every taxpayer, they should be able to deal with that of uh, 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 withholding tax. A significant provision is the fact that goods that are imported into Nigeria and purchased online, you know, when you purchase goods online and then they deliver it to your, to your, to your doorstep, uh, ordinarily you, you will uh, want to say that how what happens to custom duty and, of course, the VAT at the point of entry. So this provision that has been included in this Finance Act is such that when you are buying goods online from those non-resident um, uh, uh, digital platform, it is expected that those digital platforms will also have been appointed by FRS as their agent. And it is expected that they will be the one accounting for the VAT on those goods you are importing. So if those non-resident entities are the one accounting for the VAT on the goods you are importing, then customs should not be charging VAT on those goods at the point of entry. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we'll have double uh, VAT payment. So this provision is, has put uh, uh, the uh, provision to, uh, to address that specific uh, 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 lacuna that may exist. Then we also have um, this new provision to redefine what exactly is building. You know, a recent uh, amendment to the Finance Act, you know, provides that uh, buildings, land, 
uh, or interest in land and rent, okay, are not to be liable to VAT. So the question is what constitutes uh, building? Okay, so this specific provision that technically excluded radio and television must, so it will affect you, okay, <laughs> transmission line, cell towers, vehicles and mobile homes, or caravans and trailers as from the definition of building. So which means those are not classified as building for the purpose of, uh, of VAT, which means those transactions, you know, are liable to VAT. Another one that is annoying is the fact that education tax yeah, education has tax. been increased uh, from 2.5% uh, of accessible profit to now 3%. 3%. Uh, we, the justification for that we cannot see in, uh, in the schools. That, uh, so uh, we hope that uh, maybe that is what they need to, to, to be able to uh, put the schools in proper uh, place. But that is, the, that is the summary of the provision. Let, 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 interesting. And you really went, you touched on all the critical parts of that document. But the timing is something that I also want to get clarity on. Yeah. Some say the effective date May 1st, 2023. Or that is when it should be effective. But most people are in doubt. So what's your view on about the implementation of okay. this? Okay. That's a very good question. Uh, of course, the... The, the act says 1st of May, but it was signed into law on the 28th of May. Yeah. I mean, 20, yes, 28th of May. Yeah, so which means the law yes, takes effect it. when it is uh, signed, okay. not when the act says, because uh, uh, it cannot be retrospective. Okay, and again, uh, there are two types of taxes that we normally have, the direct and the indirect. Right. Okay, the, the, the direct are those corporate tax, company income tax, and all that. And while the indirect is all those transaction taxes. For transaction taxes like VAT and withholding tax, no, withholding tax is not a tax, uh, and uh, stamp duties and all that, we expect that they will take effect when the law becomes effective, which means going forward from 28th of May, whatever applies to those transaction taxes should be implemented. But for corporate tax, you know, uh, most companies are already filing their returns uh, for 2022 account. Uh, we're already in 2023 now, and we're having new provision that ordinarily should affect your returns. So I will expect the FRS to give guidelines on this, because I, what I expect is that this should be applicable uh, when you are filing your 2024 returns. That means corporate tax returns. Okay, should not be applicable to your 2022 account at all, because we're already almost in the middle of May. Most companies are preparing their returns to be five. They have, most people have even filed those that want to take advantage of installmental payment or, you know, they have already filed their returns. So you cannot apply law, you know, that is just coming into effect. But we'll wait and see whether there will be any contrary uh, direction from the FR. I don't expect anything. Oh, almost different. finally, let's look at the assessment of the previous Finance Act. Yeah. And uh, would you really say that that support, have they achieved that objective? That support to the Appropriation Act, is that happening? Definitely. Uh, several provisions from... 2019, this is the fourth in the series, and we we'll see, can see clearly the impact. We have the significant economic presence where non-resident uh, entities operating to the Nigerian territory are now fully subjected to tax on their income. Uh, we have had several relief that are dated now, you know, upgraded. Uh, we have provisions uh, for several provisions. Uh, we have issues around dividend tax, which has now been tidied up properly. We have issues around minimum tax that used to be based on your net asset, uh, your, uh, your, 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 your gross profit, your, you know, so that has now been streamlined strictly on your, on your turnover at the risk of uh, 0.5%. Uh, quite a number of provisions have been made. And uh, of course, when you look at the government budget and the fact that we have deficit financing, there's always going to be need to, to look at what we can do internally to generate more revenue. Apart from tax provisions, also enabling the tax authority, both in the federal and the subnational, uh, sub to also be able to you know, generate enough funds. Of course, um, going forward, uh, any provision that you know, becomes outdated or is no longer in tune with the government that has just come in, there is opportunity to always amend it as quickly as possible. And that is why that is the beauty of the Finance Act. You don't have to wait till as an assembly go through all their yes. rigors of amending, even though we know that there are several of those provisions, particularly stamp duty, even capital gains tax, that need wholesale review and amendment. 
But of course, as we go along on a yearly basis, it is always good to have this opportunity to amend the law, particularly to address specific area of the law. Well, interesting stuff now. The federal government, of course, the full deregulation is, yes. is no more news. And we, that's my second discussion here, yes. talking subsidy and all of that, and the removal of subsidy on PMS, of course. And here's a new legislation now introducing a new levy, an upward review of education tax. You also identified that from 2.5 to 3%. And what would be your advice to taxpayers on this Finance Act? And uh, what areas do you advise government to consider looking forward? Okay, yes, of course. Um, Increase in tax from 2.5% to 3% is significant for any company, for any, whether uh, you like it or not. But of course, we know that government, you know, can do more by ensuring we have more people in the tax net. Mm -hmm. The number of persons in terms of percentage that are complying with the tax provisions are still very low. And that is why our tax to GDP ratio remains very low, even though we, we now say that it is about 10.86%, okay, which is good. We expect that it will grow to about 15% in the very near future. But of course, until we do with certainty of tax, particularly the tax authority, several entities or organizations that have nothing to do with tax engage themselves in tax collection until we deal with multiplicity of, of tax. You know, we shouldn't have more than six types of taxes ordinarily as a country. Um, but now that we have over 27 type of taxes from one state to the other, and then even with federal government, we will continue to have these issues. So uh, I believe that if you continue with the, if we continue with the trajectory of uh, digitization and uh, 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 automation that has started, which I believe is allowing federal government and tax authority to appoint, you know, uh, companies that they think are trustworthy. That's the way I see it. Uh, to, to be their agent for collection, even though it's unnecessary burden on them, as far as they are concerned, until you continue, if you continue in that, you know, direction, definitely our tax uh, system and the tax collection will improve. Uh, that, that is where I see it. But definitely we need to deal with um, uh, this, uh, what was mentioned by the president in his uh, inaugural speech, the multiple taxation in Nigeria. I must thank you so much. Interesting conversation with you as usual. In-depth, uh, Mr. Albert Foloran Shaw. He's the managing consultant with Pedable Professional Services. Thank you so much for your insights. Critical look into all of this document and what it means for us. Thank we you appreciate so much. your time. Thank you so much.